Worth looking into.
again, got a bunch of good Methodists here because we're waiting towards the rear of the sanctuary. <laughs> so, happy Mother's Day. Today is a busy day in the church. We've got a lot going on today. I uh, want to tell you just a little bit about what's going on. We've got two graduates here this morning we're going to recognize in just a few moments. Um, so we're proud of Gracie and Emily and uh, look forward to sharing a slideshow with you and sharing a little bit about their accomplishments and where they're headed. So we're going to honor and recognize them. We've got gifts for them from the church. And so it's an exciting day for them and for us. Amen. Yeah. Uh, today is Sunday, May 8th. It's the fourth Sunday of Easter. Uh, today is also a special Sunday, one of six special Sundays in the United Methodist Church. I want to make you aware of that before our offering time. So uh, you should have an envelope for today. It is Native American Ministry Sunday. And so whatever gifts you give towards Native American Ministry Sunday will go towards education. Uh, Native American Seminaries, United Methodist Seminaries. And it's a wonderful ministry uh, that we all are invited to be a part of. So I encourage you to give as you are able to that um, in our time of tithes and offerings. There's a little card here that gives you a little more information on Special Sundays and on Native American Ministry Sunday. So I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, we've got several things going on in the life of the church. Uh, we've got a hiking trip coming up uh, next Saturday. I'm excited about that and uh, invite you to come along. It's an easy hike. We're going to take our time. We're going to focus on fellowship, right? And, and just being in nature and observing the beauty of God's creation. We're going to be going up to Gilbert and hiking the old railroad trail. And uh, it's supposed to be easy, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I encourage you to come and be a part of that. We're going to do a different trail every month, so uh, I'm excited about that group. Also, we have a new book study, uh, Bible study group that we're starting. That'll be Monday, May 16th. This is the book, The Ninefold Path of Jesus. Uh, so far, we've got about six or seven folks who will be joining us in that group. I'm excited about that. We've ordered books, and I've ordered a few extra uh, because I know there will be someone who will say, ah, I should have ordered a book and been a part of that group. So that's your opportunity. We've got books, and uh, so, well, they're not in yet, okay, those of you who signed up. But they will be this week, and we'll get those out to you uh, before uh, Monday the 16th. Uh, let's see, men's breakfast this month on the 21st of May, we're inviting everyone in the church, men and ladies. By the way, today's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> what am I thinking? <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Uh, I like to celebrate all women on Mother's Day because there are women in my life uh, who have uh, nurtured me and helped raise me. Uh, some who didn't have children of their own, and some who had many other children. And so thank you, moms. Thank you, ladies, uh, for the gifts you bring and, and for the way you love and nurture others. And so we, we celebrate you today. And we need your help on the 21st. Okay? Uh, not necessarily with breakfast, but maybe so. Yes, they are. Contact Donna because we don't want to make 4,000 pancakes and then 20 show up. That's just not going to work. Thank you. Right. So if you're going to come help us on Saturday, please sit with Donna and let us know so we uh, have an idea how many thousand pounds of bacon we can buy. Yeah, so you can send an email to the church email, email address. Uh, let us know, or if you want to just Right. It, don't just tell Donna because she'll have 50 people saying, yeah, and she'll be trying to remember. So write a little note and say, I will be there. Or better yet, send an email. We sent an email invitation out, and if you can reply to that, if you check your church email, uh, new, same newsletter group. So uh, let us know if you can be here so we can plan for breakfast. But we're going to do a work day around the church. Do some spring cleaning. Uh, we've got a little bit of work to do around the church, and uh, we need some help. What's that? Yeah, we have a Lourdes list. We have a Lourdes list, 
and that list is probably long, knowing the rules. So, uh, yeah, so if you can be here on the 21st, that's at 8 o'clock a.m. on Saturday, the 21st. You bring your gloves, bring a shovel or two, screwdriver, a few things like that, and uh, Right. But we should have the food covered, right? Food should be covered. Food will be covered. So, all right. Any other announcements I may be missing? I see a hand back there, Lori. Yes, I would just like to invite anyone that would like to join us in our Sunday school class. We used to be called the young adult class. <laughs> the young boy class. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lori. There will be no youth fellowship tonight uh, since it's Mother's Day, and so youth will come together again next Sunday night. Uh, we will, I think we're meeting at 4 o'clock uh, next Sunday and going to take the youth to Urban Air. So parents make note of that. We'll leave at about 4.30 or so, 4.30 or 5, head down there. and should be back at the church no later than 8 or 8.30 or 10. Who knows? Uh, Gracie's graduation is a week from today, right? And so that's at 2 o'clock, the Clinton High School graduation in the auditorium. So we'll be there to cheer you on. And Emily's graduation at Huntsville will be Thursday. Uh, I'm not sure what time, but I'll be there. So. <laughs> I promise. So, uh, all right. Any other announcements? <laughs> All right. Well, let us open our hearts and our minds as we enter into this time of worship. It's Mother's Day. Watch this video. It's time to celebrate all the wonderful mothers out there. Not just for being shining examples of how great a mom can be, but also for being beautiful reflections of who God is. Like God, you've provided for us. You've shown us how much you care from the very beginning. With God, we guide us, helping us navigate through every decision, big or small. You've been patient with us, helping us grow and learn from the mistakes we made. And like God, you forgive us, offering us grace so those mistakes can never define us. You've been present. It sounds so simple, but it's so important just knowing you're there when you need it. And most of all, you've loved us unconditionally as only someone filled with God's love can. So today we thank you for all of this and so much more. Happy Mother's Day. said Amen. I want to invite you to join with me now in our gathering prayer. The words are on the inside of your bulletin. You have brought us, O oh God, to another Lord's day when we are privileged to worship you with our brothers and sisters in Christ. May we have unity of mind and heart as we open ourselves to the movement of your Holy Spirit. As your love grows within us, may we have rich fellowship with you and with one another. In Christ's name, amen. And now I invite you to stand as you are able and join with me in our call to worship. The words are on the screen and also on the inside of your book. Loving Christ, you are our gentle shepherd. We are your people. We long to know your will and to live in your life. Keep us safe and secure in your compassionate hands. Lead us, gentle shepherd. Lead us into your path of love and service. As you lead and guide us, touch our hearts and minds 
in this worship time. So that our spirits may be refreshed and our lives filled with joy and praise. Amen. You may be seated. I believe Ken has another video. such a blessing with our youth group and, and help out every Sunday. And so I want you all to come forward and be a part of this. And uh, I'd like to invite Gracie and Emily to come forward as well. If y'all would come up here on the platform. Ken, you can go ahead and start that other slideshow as well. I want to tell you a little bit about these two graduates. Uh, Gracie Hereka uh, is the granddaughter of Ted and Jonelle O'Neill. Uh, Gracie is a senior, as I said, at Clinton High School. Uh, Gracie uh, played softball, uh, was on the dance team, played tennis, and was in FFA and the Beta Clubs. Uh, she has received the academic scholarship to UACCM, uh, University of Arkansas Community College in Moralton, and also the Arkansas Challenge Award. Gracie's future plans are to attend UACCM in the fall to major in either social work or teaching, and after two years, she will transfer to UCA to continue her education. Brian, would you present to Gracie with her gifts? Um, We are proud of you, Gracie, and as I, uh, as I usually tell our graduating seniors, your church will always be your church, and we will always be here for you. Can't shake your hand down. <laughs> but we are your church, and we will always be here for you, no matter where you go, um, what you do. Um, so we're proud of you, and congratulations. Emily Moore is the son of Kelly and Lee. <laughs> Daughter, I'm sorry. Who wrote that on here? Someone played a trick on me. <laughs> Emily Moore is the daughter. <laughs> she will never forgive me. <laughs> I'm going home. 
Emily was a member of the volleyball team, the track team. She was a member of the key club. Uh, she went through the CNA program at Huntsville High School this year. Uh, she worked as a lifeguard during the summer months, uh, was involved in youth mission trips, uh, volunteering in food pantries and soup kitchens, and was secretary of the student council. Uh, she has also received the Academic Challenge Scholarship, and her plan is to attend UACCM as well and pursue a career as a registered nurse. So, Emily... My daughter. <laughs> Y'all are used to me doing things like that by now, aren't you? checked out the table in the narthex I invite you to do that check out the table they've got some of their pictures up on the poster boards and and different things we've also put some baskets out so if you've got cards you want to leave them uh, that would be great and just put them in the basket or if you didn't bring a card that's fine write them a little note of encouragement we've got some index cards there with some pens and uh, you can write them a little note uh, just a word of encouragement and so uh, we are grateful for Gracie and Emily, and uh, maybe they can commute together to UACCM. I don't know, but we're excited about their future and uh, all they have accomplished and all they're going to accomplish. So let's give them one more round of applause. I invite you to stand now and join with me as we sing our opening hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. The words are on the screen and also in your hymnal, number 577, in your United Methodist hymnals. Let us lift our voices now and praise the Lord for our song. Well, I 
I want to show y'all some gifts that have been given to me over the years. You may have seen me wearing this. You know what this is called? It's a stole, okay? Um, pastors wear stoles, and it's kind of a symbol of what we do as pastors. And it kind of reminds us uh, of like a towel that we break over us, uh, over Jesus, you know, like Jesus would wear something over his shoulders to show that he was a servant, like a towel that he used to wash his disciples' feet. And so it kind of symbolizes that, uh, the servants. But this was made for me. I'll pass it around so you can look at it. It's really pretty, isn't it? That was made for me by a United Methodist Women's Group at a church I serve. And it's one of my favorite stories. It's so pretty. I love all the colors. You can open it up if you want to. And then this is another one that was made for me. Another stole. And that one pretty nice. What I love about those is that they were handmade, and that makes it kind of special to me. Um, it's kind of like a hymn or a song that someone sings, right? It's something that someone does as a gift for someone else, um, for others. And so, like, Dale's getting ready, Mr. Dale's going to sing a special here this morning church and that's a gift that he's sharing with us and giving to us really. So things like this, things that I need, another one of my favorite gifts is like chocolate chip cookies. Y'all like chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. You ever had anyone make you some cookies? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Sunny's chocolate chip cookies are good, huh? Yeah. Uh, chicken and dumplings. Judy. Those were delicious, by the way. Thank you. If things like that are an expression of love and care for others, right? Yes. And so today we're going to be talking about in church the story of Tabitha. Uh, her name was also Dorcas. That's another interpretation of the name. Um, she lived in the Christian town, uh, or she was a Christian in the town of Java. And uh, she was a very successful businesswoman, and she was a servant, too. She helped the poor, and she helped the sick, and she did. She made fabrics and tunics, and, and she gave those away to people who were in need, and she did all kinds of good. Um, she helped people around her, especially widows and other poor people. Uh, she made clothing for them. She, uh, she was just an incredible woman. Well, the scripture we're reading today tells us that she got sick and she died. And so her friends and people in the community sent word to Peter, one of Jesus' disciples. He was a disciple. He came and, and he sent them out of the room and he, he kneeled down and prayed. And she was given life again. She came alive. And so all the people around her were so happy because Joppa, or Tabitha was alive again. And they knew how special she was and how, how she cared so much for other people. And they were so sad when she died. And so uh, when Peter uh, prayed over her and she came to life again, it really made them happy and excited. And so they knew that the good work she was doing, taking care of people, would continue. And she inspired others to care for, for widows and poor and people who were in need. So um, there are ways that you can do good too, right? What are some of the things you can do? Y'all make chocolate chip cookies? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are some other ways that you can? need someone there to listen to the ways that we can be kind and that we can do good. 
So what I encourage y'all to do is to think about some of the gifts you might have. I mean, y'all are, y'all are getting gifts. You're, you're, you're learning things and you're discovering who you are and as you grow up, you're going to, yeah, me too. You're going to, you're going to realize that you have ways that you can help others. And so, so I encourage you to think about that and to think about ways right now that you can be a blessing to others, right? And so, um, we all need to look for ways that we can bless others. And so, I need you to help me with something this morning, okay? You see all those carnations over there in that bucket? We're going to pass those out to the ladies, every lady in the church who wants one, okay? And so can y'all help me do that? We're going to walk over there and I'll give you a few to take around and pass out. We've got pink, red, and pinkish white. So I'm just going to, these may be wet on the bottom. I didn't think about that, but it's okay. It won't hurt anything if they're in the wet. Okay. I gave you a bunch, didn't I? Okay. But that's okay. We'll make sure everyone is able to help. Now, let's just walk through the sanctuary here, and we'll pass those out. Ladies, if you would like a carnation, just raise your hand, and we will get you one. Katie Grace, let's save one for, is it Nana? Or? Honey. Honey. Save one for honey. Yeah. Here's one. Some ladies in the choir loft, too, girls, if y'all want to take some up there.
been uh, over a year, almost two years since we've gotten to do that. And I enjoy it very much, although it's total chaos when I lose the drum. That's okay. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to everyone, particularly the mothers. Uh, dedicate this song to you today. A little country. I can sing a little country. So, here we go.
When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Java, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of this portion of God's holy word. This is the good news for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, speak through me or in spite of me. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In his book, How the Irish Saved Civilization, Thomas Cahill argues that there are two types of people in the world, Romans and Catholics. Catholic with a small c, the seamstress of Java. What a wonderful example she is for us today on this Mother's Day. What a wonderful example she is for us any day, right? Because she was such a faithful disciple. 1.3 billion. That's how many Roman Catholics there are in the world today. Now, we're a United Methodist. We're not Roman Catholic light. You know, we're Protestants. But 1.3 billion. It's a lot. But there are many more non-Roman Catholic Christians who fall into one of the two categories, Roman or Catholic, lowercase c. But what does that mean? At the end of his book, How the Irish Saved Civilization, Thomas Cahill points out that the, the entire world is divided into Romans and Catholics, lowercase c. The Romans are the rich and powerful, he writes, people who run things their own way and must always accumulate more and more because they believe that there will never be enough to go around. They have this mindset of scarcity. And so they must accumulate, they must build and produce and acquire. The Catholics, Lord A.C., on the other hand, are universalists, people who instinctively believe that all humanity makes one family. Catholics, do I need to say it again? I just want you to get the point. They're all image bearers, that all people, anywhere and everywhere, regardless of their means or lack thereof, are children of God. And so there's this connection between us, right? It's not all about me. It's not all about what I can achieve and accomplish and acquire for myself. It is about keeping others in mind. So which camp do we find ourselves in? Actually, there's probably a little Roman and a little Catholic in each of us build skyscrapers, design clothing, produce, produce, produce. <coughs> Catholics volunteer in soup kitchens, visit the sick, run medical clinics for the homeless, and spend their vacation time doing mission work at home and abroad. The Roman way of life is about achieving, acquiring, building, maintaining, and the Catholic way of life is about giving, serving, sacrificing, 
And so naturally, we're all going to have a little bit of each of those in us, right? The reality is these two ways of life are not. The real question is, what kind of focus does God desire for us to have? How does God want us to be, to live in this world and to be in this world? Were we created to serve only our own wants and desires or were we created to heal, to focus on loving and serving others? You know, I think that's one of the things I love about John Wesley and I, I mentioned this a few weeks ago when Wesley was talking about money, he talked about earning all you can, saving all you can, and giving away all you can. You hear the balance there between Roman and Catholic? Earn all you can, save all you can, give away all you can. Today's story in the ready center of commerce, full of Romans anxious to find an angle to do a deal and to turn a buck. It was a bustling city. People went to Joppa to stake their claim to to win big. And when the Apostle Peter comes to town, he stays with one of these local entrepreneurs, Simon the Tanner, a man who works Peter's conscience as, as he thought about what God said earlier in Acts 10, 15. You may remember when Peter and God were having this conversation about clean and unclean words came, do not call anything impure that God has made clean, right? And that's another story in another sermon. So, in Joppa, there is a small Christian community trying to follow the way of Jesus and live faithfully for Jesus. They lived in community, worshipped together, and served together. And, and there was this lady named Tabitha Dorcas. And the Aramaic name Tabitha means gazelle. Tabitha is a true Catholic, lowercase c. Remember verse 36 in our scripture reading today reminds us that Tabitha was devoted to good works and acts of charity. But we also know that Tabitha was a very successful businesswoman. She is well known for making tunics and fine clothing, which she sold in the, in the town of Joppa. She had a business, a very successful business. And as a successful entrepreneur, she most likely accumulated some wealth. She was well respected. She had money. And she had prestige. And the story goes on that Tabitha falls ill and dies and the community and church are devastated. So Peter arrives and you know the story. We just read it, right? Her life was restored and she continued doing good. She used her gifts and her resources to bless and care for others. The weak, the widows, the orphans, the poor. Her life was a witness to the reality that we are created to heal. Tabitha had resources, but she also had a responsibility. And that responsibility was to use her resources to bring healing to others. Those who were hurting, those who were alone, her life was a witness to that. One commentator said she kept the Roman and Catholic sides of herself together, united in a single, seamless existence. I would say she knew who she was. She had her priorities right. Right? Sometimes our priorities get out of whack. We, we tend to prioritize material things. We tend to elevate ourselves in our own minds 
hoping that others will elevate us in their minds, right? Because of our material success. I think Tabitha had it figured out. Yes, she had resources. But she was a faithful witness to the grace and love of her creator. For over 30 years, Peter Gomes has served as a minister to the students of Harvard University, and he has seen them struggle with the expectations of their parents and their professors, as well as with questions of what they are going to do with their lives. While it is certainly true that most graduates of Harvard are not going to have to look for a job very long, they're not going to have very many struggles finding gainful employment in the world, Gomes has discovered that many of them are consumed by a far bigger challenge. Gracie and Emily, I want you to hear this. They are asking the question, what will it take for me to make a good life and not merely a good living? What will it take for me to make a good life and not merely a good living? we make a good life? Tabitha was a light in Joppa. Perhaps your Joppa is a classroom, right? Teacher, I've seen teachers pour their lives and resources into the lives of children, providing healing along with knowledge, right? Have you all seen that? Maybe your Joppa is at home or in, in a business, wherever you are. Or, or maybe your joppa is a hospital or a courtroom. Wherever your joppa is, you have the opportunity to be both Roman and Catholic. Right? This means loving that student who comes in with dirty clothes and has an attitude and can't focus, right? That means loving the homeless woman who asks for your spare change every time you walk by. That means loving the teenager, parents who bangs up the family car again and again. <laughs> loving the neighbor with rusty pickup truck on blocks next door to your house, right? Where there are so many ways that we can use our resources. The, the, the ways God has blessed us are so many, and there, there are so many ways that we can use our resources to be a blessing to others. Loving the families we serve through church missions. Families of faith. Maybe you've witnessed it. I've witnessed it through my great grandma, Athy Jane, through my mamma, Ethel, my mom, through aunts, through friends, the United Methodist women. I've witnessed it. Women with resources who give of their resources and give themselves to others. It is the key to a good life. It goes way beyond a good living. So may we remember the witness of Tabitha today. <coughs> may we remember the witness of all the moms <coughs> who have given themselves, shared themselves with us. May we all pursue a good life, real happiness, and the opportunities to do something worth doing. May we all live our lives and even offer them, if required, for something worthy of sacrifice. I believe that's the good news for us today. Tabitha wasn't alone, was she? We can all think of someone who has taken the time to care for others, 
has really invested themselves in the lives of others. That's refreshing in our world today, isn't it? In this me culture, this culture that, that we even see in the church, right? It's all about us. We need to be reminded that there's something bigger and that something bigger is living in service of others. Amen? Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you now to see in this historic creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sent the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Yes, Debbie. Uh, the family of Cody Glenn. What was that name again? I'm sorry, Cody Bramlett. Cody Bramlett, okay. Thank you, Debbie. <coughs> Others? Yes, Ida. Uh, my high school band director, Nathan Andrews, and his wife have a family Wednesday. He is in the children's hospital with some serious heart issues. Please keep him in your Okay. All right. Sure will. Kelly? Seth is having surgery on uh, Wednesday for his arm, so pray for him. Okay. We'll be praying for Zach. Good to have Zach in the table with us this morning. Zach is my bonus son. <laughs> 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 What was her name again? Bree. Bree. Okay. What is her last name? Holt. 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 Okay. All right. Others? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. For too long, O oh God, we have accepted the world's reality as truth. We grieve for the poor, the sick, or the dead, forgetting that you have plans for them. Yet in the story of Tabitha, we glimpse your vision as your spirit transforms a community around a disciple committed to a different reality. One where the poor have enough. One where the sick are made whole, where new life comes even to those who are dead. 
Having caught a glimpse, we long to see more of your work among us, to feel the work of your powerful spirit. As the village called on Peter long ago, so we call on you. Come now without delay. Come now and touch those we have lifted up by name this morning. Come now and touch those we lift up silently in our hearts now. We thank you, God, for hearing the prayers of your people. We thank you, God, for being closer to us than our hands, feet, or even breath. And for those who are hurting and alone right now, we pray that they would experience your peace and your presence. We celebrate your truth as it takes over our own, remembering that you call on others to make real your plans for the waters in the faith. Use us, O Lord. Use us, O God, to, to bring healing to those around us. Help us, God, to follow the way of Jesus. Jesus, who teaches us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward for this morning's tithe and offerings. <coughs> Let us pray. God, you have blessed us with so many resources, with more than we deserve, and we ask God that you would help us to be good stewards, and so as we bring our gifts of tithes and offerings to you, God, we ask that you would pour out your blessings upon these gifts, that they would be used to bring your light into the deepest, darkest corners of our community and beyond. May you is an invitation to follow Jesus, to follow Peter and Philip and Tabitha and all the saints who have gone before us. It's, a, it's an invitation to faithfulness, to the mission of Jesus. And so I invite you uh, as we get ready to sing our closing hymn uh, to pray and ask God to, 
to lead you where God wills and, and follow Jesus uh, into this world. Uh, if you'd like to receive more information about joining the church, being a part of this community of faith, I would love to visit with you uh, during our closing hymn or after the service. Uh, but let us prepare to lift our voices and sing our closing hymn, Here I Am, Lord. Uh, Dale did a pretty good job picking out this hymn because that's really what it's all about is, is being a disciple and faithfully following where God leads us. It's number 593 in our United Methodist hymnals. The words are also on the screen. Let us join together as we lift our voices and sing this beautiful hymn. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh.